Hello everyone, in this second lesson of how to make my first Unity game tutorial we are going to explore materials as well as some more game objects. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more of this series and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload, it really helps me out. Now on with the show. So a material is basically a way of applying a colour or an image to objects or models inside the Unity engine. So for example, we have this cube that we placed here from the last tutorial. Let's actually give this cube some colour rather than the standard white. Now one thing we can do is we could use a texture and apply a texture to it, but let's create the material from scratch. So firstly let's create a folder which will allow us to store all of our materials in. So let's go to assets here in our project window and we will be at the default top level. Let's right click and we can see the word create at the top with another menu. We have many many things here some of which we will be using at some point but we want the top one which is folder. Let's call this folder materials. So any type of material that we create will be placed inside this folder. So let's go to that section down here, right click again, create again, and you'll notice about a third of the way down you'll have material. When you click it you can name this absolutely anything you want, but we should probably name it something relative to what we're creating here. Let's call this red material hit return and you'll see the icon turns into a white orb. Now we can change this material, the colour and scale and all kinds of things right now or what I've always found the best thing to do is apply the material to the object first and then modify the material. That way we're able to see things change in real time. So I'll explain and demonstrate why I think that is the best thing to do. So we're going to take a look at this option just for now and this albedo option here is the colour of the material. So let's select this here and change the colour to red and then close. And you'll notice that yep the material has indeed changed here but because we haven't physically applied it to this object nothing will ever happen. So for now I'm going to undo that change to red and then I'm going to drag and drop this material onto this cube right here. So hold down left mouse button, drag and drop onto the cube. You can also drag and drop onto the same object inside the hierarchy. The same effect will occur. It will be on this cube now and if we click on the cube you'll notice down the bottom we have a couple of different components but we now have the material component attached. That means that whenever we change this material it will update this object real time. So let's click on our material once again. Let's go to this albedo option again and let's change it to red and you'll see that the cube changes exactly the same time that we change to red. Now there are a couple of different options that we have on this material, not all of them are going to be relevant at the moment. I think more than anything it just depends how you want your material to look. We could make it slightly shiny, we could make it plain, flat, simple and plasticine. it's entirely up to you. So I do have another video going into much more depth on materials, so I'm not going to go too in depth here, but I'm going to give you enough information to fully understand what a material is. So the options that we are going to use are albedo, we're able to change the colour. We are also able to apply a texture, but we're not going to do that this tutorial. We're going for just a simple look until we're ready to really apply more assets. We can change the visual image of this material in the metallic and smoothness sections. So if we were to increase the metallic look you should be able to see that this does indeed look a lot more metallic. Because it's red it's deeper and we can really see the metallic look within the icon of this material. If I set it back to zero on the slider we can just see it does look plasticine. But metal has more of a tendency to shine in certain spots and we can see here 
and hear that that really is the case. We can also change just how smooth it is, and once again we can see just how shiny the material does indeed appear. Now if we pan our camera around and look at our cube, we are not going to see much of a difference at the moment. Reason being is because there isn't exactly a whole lot in the scene to cause any kind of reflection, and simply the size itself is rather small. So I do intend to use this object as some kind of ground level. So let's change the scale to be somewhat larger than what it is, so we've got somewhere for our character to eventually walk around on. So let's change the scale to 20 on the X, and let's also change it to 20 on the Z. And we now have a large square that we can walk around on. So what else can we do with this material? We can change the source to either metallic or albedo. And obviously, depending on what you want your game to look like, these settings will be quite important. We can see just how intense the red can be just by changing some of these settings. Now we have the very simple plasticine look and setting it to metallic and working those around, we have a much more deeper look. So I would probably recommend playing around with some of these at some point to at least illustrate how you want your game to look, whether you want it shiny, plasticine-y. I know a lot of people do like that very simplistic look. And I think I might actually go for that slight look about there for now. So coming back a little bit, if we click on our directional light, and do you remember last tutorial, we played around with the rotation of that light. Well, we can do the same now, and you can see just how much it does indeed impact that material. So if I reset that by holding control and pressing Z again, let's actually set that material back to metallic alpha, and let's bring those values right up to the top. And if we go back to our directional light and move it around, you'll see there is no impact. So you have to keep in mind that depending on what you want to do, it can take some time for your material to actually physically, in inverted commas, uh, update on how it looks, because you cannot simply just do that, move your camera, uh, your uh, light source around, and expect instant results. You would have to let it just kind of process. So that is why you would not see any results when you change your light source as such. There we go. So I'm going to reset that back to its original value of 50. And I'm going to change this material back to roughly what I had it before. Let's have it about there. So another way that we can modify material is on the object itself. So if we click on our cube and go down here to the bottom of the inspector panel, we can actually change the exact same settings right here for our material. You just have to keep in mind that even though you're changing it on one single object, if that material is attached to any other object, then it would also make changes to that object as well. So when you're changing things here, you're not specifically changing the object itself, you're changing the material. So we can see, change it there, that is how it has an impact. So as I said earlier, best thing to do at this point is play around with these first few settings to get a nice colour of what you want on there. If you have the knowledge already and would like to apply a texture, you could always go ahead and do that. But we don't actually need a texture on here right now. So let's go a little further with some of this material and object business, shall we? Let's create another object and create a different material. So let's go to Game Object, let's go to 3D Object, and let's go to Cylinder. Now, I want this cylinder to end up a bit like a coin. So I can actually modify the scale of this to get it in accordance with what I want it to look like. Firstly, let's set the position as 0, 0, 0. We now have its centre of our scene. So we have a good way of seeing where it is. So if we zoom in with a mouse wheel and pan up, we can actually change where we want this to be, how we want it to be rotated, and its size. So let's change the rotation 
by 90 degrees on the X, and then we'll place it about there. Now we can always bring it out there. You'll notice that it does indeed collide with the floor, but we don't need to worry about that for now. We can just basically pull it out of the floor to about there. So we need this to be a coin shape. That means we need to change the size of the scale right here. And we can change this by going, let's say, 0.3 uh, and 0.3. Now we need it to be extremely thin. So we need to change this one from probably point, uh, so sorry, probably one to about 0 0.1. That's still too big, I would say. So we could go a little further. I guess it depends how big you want your coin to be. Or you could change the scale of this and increase the size. So now it's a rather thick coin. Let's decrease this one more time to 0 0.05. And I think that should do for about the size of our coin. Of course, it doesn't look much like a coin at the moment. It just looks like a white dot on a red background. So let's create another material or let's duplicate this material and change what we need. So here's a little trick. If we click on the material we've created, hold down control and press D, we can duplicate that material. And what it will do is it will give it the same name, except it will put the number one after. So we can see here, red material one. So let's actually rename this. So we can right click, rename, and let's call it yellow material. And now let's drag and drop, even though it's still red, let's drag and drop that onto our cylinder inside the hierarchy right there. So now what we can do is let's change the color from red to yellow. So hold that, yellow, and there's our yellow coin. So it's still working in the same way that the red material is, it's just now yellow. And remember that little trick that I just showed you, holding down control and pressing D? Well, that can also work on game objects as well. Let's select that cylinder in the hierarchy and let's do the same. Let's hold control and press D. We now have another one of those. However, we don't see it in the scene. The reason we don't see it in the scene is because it has duplicated itself in the exact same position as our previous coin. So in order to get that out of there, we can just drag and there is the split. We now have those two coins and we can do the same again if we want to. We can duplicate and bring out another coin. So it's a nice, quick, easy way of recreating the same object multiple times. So let's play around with some of these settings. Let's change this position so it's exactly one because it is ever so slightly over one on the Y axis. So let's change that to one. Let's take a look at this coin. Let's change this to 1.5 and also one. And now let's change this to 1.5. Let's change this to one and let's change this to negative two. So now they are in a much more easier position. What if there was an easier way of doing that? Well, in actual fact, there is. Let's duplicate this cylinder by holding control and pressing D and we can use something called snap. And what that will do is it will move any object in a specified amount each time. So if I hold control and move this object this way, it will move it in increments of 0 0.25. Now your settings may be slightly different. They may be one, they may be 0 0.5, they may be 0 0.25. If we go to edit, we can actually set a couple of things here. There are many, many options, and I may go through a few as they stand right now. Um, if we go to preferences, you can see that there is many, many different things here. A lot of people do get mixed up with the preferences and project settings. I do think the preferences at this point are something that we don't need to worry about, uh, but generally you could go through if you wanted to. In the project settings, you have a similar sort of uh, feel. You have many, many, many different options that you can go through and a lot of them are something that we probably will go through at some point. Uh, anyway, so 
All this comes down to the grid and snap settings. So you will often find that settings within Unity are not misplaced, but they can be a little bit confusing to find. For example, I'm not sure why grid and snap settings were ever their own separate settings and why they're not in anything else. But either way, if we go on grid and snap settings, we have this little box here. And this little box gives us the opportunity to change what the increment snap is right here. So, like I said, mine is set at 0 0.25, but you can change this to whatever you want it to be. So if you want it to be 0.5, you would put 0.5. And that means that every time you now move this, it will move in increments of 0 0.5, which we can see right there. So you'll find the snap settings to be very, very useful. I can't tell you the amount of times that I have tried to move objects and they haven't moved correctly. So next tutorial, what I would like is something a lot of people may be a little bit scared about, especially if you are brand new to all of this, and that is some C-sharp coding. Now, when we get to the C-sharp coding, please don't worry if you're new and not sure what to do. I will explain everything in detail that you need to know. So until that next tutorial, I really appreciate you watching. And if you want to know anything else, please leave a comment and I hope to see you in that next video.